Hi, Mike Kennedy with you. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to just discuss Giardia symptoms and two people I know that had Giardia and some facts from the internet. First, uh, from the internet, Giardia usually lasts from two to six weeks. A lot of people's systems can overcome it. You know, the, eventually the your body fights again it, against it and you've eliminated a lot of it from your system because of the, you know, the persistent diarrhea. So uh, if you're in a state where you can continue to eat and get fluids, uh, a lot of people, you know, can overcome it on their own. A lot of people can't. So Giardia can also last and persist up to two years. So here's a story. We've got one guy, 25-year-old healthy guy. We have a 50-year-old healthy guy who's very thin, but very healthy. <coughs> one drinks water out of a spring. He and his wife gather water and drink it. He gets, you know, they've been doing it a while, and suddenly he gets violently ill so bad that he ends up actually in the hospital, and they determine that he's got giardia, give him the, the uh, medicine, and he's, he's fine. The other person, 25-year-old, has this persistent problem. He's having this problem on and off, and it's been lasting, you know, like a year. And they've been, you know, going to the doctors, well, could it be this, could it be that, checking different things. So finally, the doctor, I guess, decides to test for giardia, and lo and behold, the person has giardia. Now, looking back at the symptoms, the symptoms uh, are kind of attached to a camping venture. So whether the person had drank water that wasn't treated, or sometimes just swimming in water, and say you, you swallow some water or whatever, uh, that can be enough to give you giardia. And he had this kind of rumbling through his system at a low level, and the symptoms would go up and down. So they get treated with an antibiotic, and they're fine. But it takes only 10 of these uh, giardia organisms to give you, you know, a full-blown uh, infection with them. And uh, you can see how that if you're in a situation, you know, I suppose you could say if you're out, if you're out camping and you have this happen to you, you know, you, you go home and go to the doctor, you know. But if you're in a situation where you can't, that isn't available, and especially in a situation where you're stuck there, you can see that having this, uh, these diarrhea symptoms and everything uh, for, for, you know, a week could be dramatic to your health and your ability to survive. Because what's going to happen in that period is you're going to start dehydrating yourself because you're going to lose a huge amount of fluids. But also, when, you know, it's not like pure water is coming up. There's all kinds of your body electrolytes that are being flushed out too. So you're going to end up being dehydrated, uh, low on these electrolytes, and your, your general health is just going to go down. I think that's why any uh, survival kit or hunter's kit or anything should have some iodium, uh, something like that. They have generic forms of it, but it's a very inexpensive and uh, very effective way to deal with, with diarrhea. Now, some people recommend that uh, if you are by a source of water, that you can make sure that the water is going to be clean when you drink it. Sometimes it's better to wait 24 hours. So a lot of this stuff flushes out of your system and uh, you can keep rehydrated and uh, then you take the, uh, the medicine and you're going to be better off. But that's kind of a hard call because a lot of times uh, the reason you got it, well, I suppose you could get it, be, get it because you were careless, but uh, in that case, then you'd, you'd realize, say again, we're in this situation, you're out, you're lost. You get it, you've got this medicine with you, it stops the diarrhea, then you start treating your water, and uh, you kind of have to live with the consequences until you're, you're found. Most people in the United States, when they're lost, it's uh, a 72-hour event. That's why a lot of times they talk about having uh, supplies with you in your car, or if you're a hunter or you're, you're backpacking or whatever, that you have a 72-hour supply of what you need or the way to procure, procure it, because uh, that's the average time that someone might be lost. But So Giardia symptoms, very unpleasant, but avoidable if we can uh, treat our water. And to, here's an example. It doesn't need to be a lot of water. Uh, I read this example, but 
someone had taken beer cans and put them in the river and to cool off, to be cold, so they could have cold beer. Well, one of the guys takes it, and there's, you know, there's a little water on the top. Well, he flips open the beer can, drinks it, and he gets sick from Giardia because of that little bit of water that's on the top of the beer can. So you got to remember that we're talking about needing only 10 microorganisms, you know, that can all fit in one drop of water to uh, ruin your day and quite a bit longer if you are, don't have access to uh, immediate treatment. So there you go. Giardia symptoms and definitely why you should avoid them. And cryptosporidium crypto cryptosporidium this tongue twister every time I say it uh, is, is like that but it's harder to kill in the water as well. So we've got two things. I mean there's a host of all kinds of things that can be in water and uh, when we go to more tropical areas, the things in the water can be a lot, lot worse. Bye.